massage with the suction cup is a modern form of a fat reducing method known for centuries. It pulls excess fluid out through the skin. What's going on gang? Welcome to today's video. Welcome here if you've never been to this channel before. This channel contains videos that can help heal more than 90% of any health, wellness, and body image challenge. So please do hit that subscribe button for me down below and let's get into today's video. Spring has sprung. It is April. Everyone is going mad crazy about trying to get their summer body, trying to lose weight. I have so many videos on this channel that help you lose weight. This one, I'm not going to talk about things to do to lose weight. I'm going to talk about things you should not worry about doing to lose weight that I see people doing all over the place and you're really just sending yourself, you know, three steps forward, two steps back, sometimes three steps forward, four steps back, depending on the situation. <laughs> what a waste of time. Not so efficient. So here we go. Things you do not need to worry about to lose weight. Number one, cardio. Don't put me down for cardio. What are you doing? Horizontal running. And by that I mean too much cardio or the same cardio routine day in and day out. The body is an adaptogenic mechanism. Our bodies are designed to adapt and to be the most efficient it can be in balancing us, keeping us in homeostasis. So what happens if you're doing cardio primarily for weight loss, if you're focusing on doing the same cardio routine every day, like you go for an hour run every day, your body is going to adapt to that. When the body adapts, the metabolism slows down because your body wants to be as efficient as possible at using those calories. It wants to conserve your energy instead of spending it on something like cardio. Our bodies are still primally wired. It takes 100,000 years for the human genome to change just one tenth of 1%. So our bodies are trying to be efficient in conserving caloric energy for things like hunting and gathering, survival things. I know it's super not fair because it is this century, not that many centuries ago, but our bodies don't care. And so for now, we're gonna have to work with it to try to get it to still burn that caloric energy. Because thankfully in this day and age, we have the luxury of doing things like going to the grocery store without having to hunt down our food. First world problems. I bought too many groceries. Now I'll have to make two trips. So what should you do? You should use a combination of interval training, which means alternating between higher and lower intensity. Not every day though. I don't recommend cardio every single day. You could go for a walk every day if you want, but full on cardio every day, gonna send you backwards in those steps. As well as combining that with any form of resistance training. Resistance training is so important for weight loss. After a properly designed resistance training session, your body will be burning calories more efficiently for up to 72 hours. That's a long time. And not only that, the more muscle you have on your body, the more calories that you are going to burn at rest all the time, forever. So try to pack on that muscle, use a well-designed high intensity interval cardio routine, maybe two to three days a week of that, and it should only be 11 minutes to 20 minutes max if you're doing high intensity interval training. Otherwise, take a leisurely stroll, try to get those 10K steps a day. 10K steps is not necessarily for weight loss, however, it will help keep you healthy and keep you combating any sedentary lifestyle that may come about from a desk job or enjoying TV a little too much. Hey, let's go. Hold on a second. It's going to be late. Let me finish this. <laughs> Next one. You do not need to rely solely on exercise for weight loss. Try not to stay completely exercised focused when it comes to your weight loss goals. You cannot outrun your fork. You will never be able to out exercise a bad diet or poor diet choices. You can still treat yourself. You can still do an 80-20 balance. So 80% 
quality, healthy, whole foods full of macronutrients, full of micronutrients against 20% of treating yourself. So to give you a better idea mathematically what that would look like is that would look like eating absolutely optimally from Monday to Friday and then indulging over the weekend. Your body's not really going to notice that much of an insult. Also, I would strive to stick to cheat meals rather than cheat days. A cheat day can really throw you off and you're not gonna see the results you're going for under all of that water retention and flivery flub from the water retention that you're gonna get from the crap that you're eating. You know what you're talking about, that's where all the fats and calories is. You know where that come from? Watching that damn TV. Every time you turn it on, they got somebody in there talking about lose weight, get healthy, get in shape. Yeah, everybody looking all anorexic talking about that's healthy. I know what healthy is. And tell you something else, I don't know why everybody trying to lose weight in the first place. Let's stick with the 80-20 rule for weight loss. However, I am not a big proponent of counting calories. I don't think focusing on calorie content matters. I would be focusing on nutrient content, so the composition of your food. Is it whole foods? full of nutrients, that is where you're gonna see the weight loss rather than using numbers. A thousand calories of pizza, not going to react the same way in your body as a thousand calories of vegetables. One gets stored as fat, one gets burned as energy. Choose wisely, my friends. You must choose, but choose wisely, for as the true grail will bring you life, the false grail will take it from you. Another thing I hear my clients say a lot is since they started their exercise program, which does include weight training or resistance training, they are gaining weight, they get horrified. Your body may be putting on the muscle it needs, which may reflect as a higher number on the scale. However, please look at these photos. Both of these photos show the exact same person at that exact same weight. It is about body composition, not the number on the scale. Look at all of these women. All of these women are the exact same weight. Look at how different they are. Please do not go by the number on the scale when it comes to weight loss. Get a body scan done. I will link the video below that I made on how to know how much body fat you actually have. Okay, onward. Please do not rely on specific products like shakes or supplements designed specifically for weight loss. Weight loss shakes and supplements can have a detrimental effect on your health. These are never a good substitution for real whole foods. And they are often full of sugars and other processed ingredients that can lead to unbalance in the body. Caffeine is in a lot of these substances. A lot of weight loss specific supplements are full of caffeine. Caffeine will raise your heart rate in the short term. So for the next hour or so, your heart might beat a few more times. But behind the scenes, what's happening with too much caffeine over a longer period of time is that your body will eventually slow down your metabolism, shut off that thyroid. I will link below the video I have that explains that in detail and what is going on in your body with caffeine and how caffeine can increase your weight in not such a nice way and totally degrade your level of overall health. Not to mention, have we noticed that on these supplement containers, whether it's a weight loss shake, weight loss pills, it always says, even in the commercials, it says right to you or on the screen, in the fine print, wherever, it will say in combination with a healthy diet and exercise. Okay, excuse. Uh, a healthy diet and exercise is what is going to be causing that weight loss that you want, not these supplements. These are ways for companies to make money. And if you do look at studies on those supplements, please do notice who funds these studies. Funded studies are kind of skewed. The funding effect describes the uncanny correlation between the conclusion desired by a funding source and the conclusion reached by the researchers being funded. Next, doing this solely for aesthetic purposes. There is nothing wrong with having an aesthetic goal. I do understand that in this day and age it is so faux pas to talk about looks. I get it. Eating disorder passed. I know all about that. However, there is nothing wrong with wanting to look a certain way for healthy reasons. Yes, comfort and confidence 
comes from in here, not out here, but there is nothing wrong with having an aesthetic goal. Just make sure that that is not your only reason for wanting to lose weight. Remember, it's a choice. And if you choose right, you are going to get results that stick. Let's not forget that exercise strengthens your heart, can improve your posture if done properly. Did you see the memo about this? Will increase your bone density, again, if done properly. I'll go ahead and make sure you get another copy of that memo. And it generates endorphins in the brain. Who doesn't want more feel-good chemicals going on in that brain naturally? I think I'm high! And likewise, a healthy diet is not just for looking good. First of all, it can taste good, it can be enjoyable, and nutritious food wards off chronic illness and provides energy, makes us feel good. Health experts say cardio exercise is almost like a miracle drug. According to an article in the Harvard Medical School, cardio exercise has unique capacity to accelerate and relax, to provide stimulation and calm, to counter depression and dissipate stress. This one's a big deal right now. Cutting out an entire macro is so bad for you. Not gonna lead to lasting sustained weight loss either. It's so unhealthy. Protein, carbohydrates, and healthy fats are all seriously essential optimal functioning of your body the diets i see going around right now about cutting out a whole macro zero carb no fat super duper duper high protein which is also not so great not good protein is what builds the walls of your cells protein creates your cellular structure and it keeps your muscles repaired having protein pre, during, or post-workout, during meaning BCAAs in a drink or whatnot, and post-workout will speed up the recovery of your degraded muscle tissue that happens during a workout. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics notes that carbs are the primary fuel source burned for energy during physical activity and is the main major fuel source for the brain. Your brain runs most optimally on carbohydrates. Let's pay attention here though and be mindful of the fact that there are different carbohydrates. There are healthy carbs and there are unhealthy carbs. There are complex carbohydrates and there are very simple carbohydrates. Let's stick with the complex carbs, the healthy carbs. Please note, anything that never once had a set of eyes, so all fruits and veggies are also classified as carbs and are essential to optimal functioning. When it comes to fats, dietary fats are also essential to give your body energy and support cellular growth. They also help to protect your organs and keep your body's thermogenics properly functioning. These fats are what keep you warm. Fats also help your body absorb certain vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we really do need. Vitamins A, D, E, and K are all fat-soluble vitamins. That means we need healthy fats to absorb these essential vitamins. And fats are also responsible for producing certain hormones, and we need our hormones to work optimally because when it comes down to weight loss, hormones are in charge. Think of hormones like little messengers. They carry notes to your cells telling your body how to behave and function. So when your body is producing too many or too few hormones, it can have trouble knowing exactly what to do. A healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle is always the best treatment to balance your hormones naturally. Okay, as of late, I've been having a lot of questions and concern from clients when it comes to fruit. There is this huge craze going around about cutting out all fruit, sugar detoxes, avoid sugar that means avoiding fruit oh no 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 sugar contained in fruit reacts differently in our body than sugars would from processed foods this is about how the fruit sugar impacts our blood sugar levels based on the fruit's fiber and water content. The sugar contained in fruits is actually absorbed slowly by the human body and does not cause a rise in blood sugar like other forms of sugar. Plus, the fiber in fruit really does help slow down the absorption of carbohydrates during digestion. And this helps to lower cholesterol and curb hunger. Fruit is therefore not a hindrance to weight loss, 
but can actually help to facilitate it. That all being said, there is an important point when it comes to sugar detoxes. If you do have excess candida in the gut, eating fruit is going to feed that candida. So if you are trying to go through a sugar detox, if you're trying to get rid of your cravings via a sugar detox, etc., please do not overload on fruit. And let's move along now to the last point I've got. Please do not rely on fat-free products. When a product is labeled fat-free, that does often mean that the fat has been replaced with chemicals or added sugars. These products also leave the body innately hungry for the macronutrient that it's missing. And it will then try to get this fat macro in other ways, such as cravings, binges, When you eat fat full foods, and I really am emphasizing here healthy fats, you stay more full for so much longer. Healthy fats help stave off cravings and you just feel more satiated again with the positive chemicals releasing in that brain. And it will create a sensation of naturally wanting healthier foods with these fat free things with the cravings, that's a backfire. So those are my top tips today on things you don't need to do for weight loss. Take a little break, relax a little bit. It's not as hard as it seems. Please go ahead and check out other videos I have on this channel on the weight loss topic. I do have them sorted into handy little playlists for you. I will leave my info in the description box below for you to check out. Please do hit that little bell notification icon if you would like notifications of the next time I do post a video. Please share this channel because like I say, the videos on here are able to help heal more than 90% of any health, wellness, and body image challenge, so why not share that info with others? If you thought this video was helpful or informative at all, please do hit that little thumbs up icon for me that really does help support my channel don't forget to subscribe please comment below any comments or questions future video ideas anything at all you might have or you can go ahead and send me a message and until next time have super amounts of fun in your life and have super amounts of fun if weight loss is a goal taking your time with it using methods that are healthy for your body and that will create lasting sustainable weight loss over time till next time bye